Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Welcome to St. Isidore's. Today we celebrate the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. To begin, let's recognize God's presence in each other by welcoming those around us. With full heart and full voice, let's begin our celebration by singing together number 488, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 488. Eight. Be with you and with your spirit as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist we pause we ask Jesus to forgive us our sins Lord Jesus you raise the dead in life in the spirit Lord have mercy Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus you bring pardon and peace to the sinner Christ have mercy, Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus you bring light to those in darkness Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O God, our, our, our Lord, our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the Son of Justice with its healing rays. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. 
Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day we worked, so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right. Rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way by not keeping busy but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the day will come when there will be not where, when there will be not left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. <clears throat> then they ask him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what signs will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear the wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen. But it will not be immediately, it will not be immediately the end. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place. And awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to the prisons. And they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead you to giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand. For I myself shall give you wisdom in speaking, that all your adversities will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. When I read this Gospel, the only thing that I could say was, wow. The more I read, the more I realized 
that we're seeing things like this each and every day in our lives. And it's been going on for generations and generations. If you watch the news, you hear of the massive insurrection. If you listen to the, the radio or the TV, you hear about all the flooding and the droughts happening all over. The hurricanes that hit our East Coast. People starving in many countries. And we hear of all these things that are happening right here in our time and we think, did Jesus know that I would be here right now talking about all these things? And the answer is yes. He knew from the moment that earth was put in forth in the Garden of Eden what was going to happen. And there wasn't a time that he didn't have us ready and prepare us for these situations. And it seems gloomy and doom and dismal of all these things. And that is it really the end times? Could it be now that this is happening right here? But Jesus gives us hope in this gospel. That's the one thing, as I read, that he gave us was hope. And he said, do not be afraid. I will give you everything that you need. Do not listen to those that come forth and say, I am he. But have hope. So the more I read this, the more hope came to me. And the more I started thinking of all the things that Jesus has promised throughout all the Gospels of hope. So I pulled up my computer and I googled the word hope. And the definitions that came out were a feeling of expectation and a desire for certain things to happen. Don't we desire for our lives to go peacefully? For us to be with Jesus when we get to stand in front of him? To enter into heaven? Isn't that the hope that we have? Isn't it a desire to know that there is a God who loves us? And the other definition that came up for hope was a feeling of trust. Jesus tells us to trust in him always. He tells us that he will be with us and he will give us the words to say and the things to do. He will place the Holy Spirit in our heart and we will know what is good and what is right and what is wrong. One of the things that I find most interesting about the Bible is how the Old Testament is a foreshadowing of the New Testament. And all the things that we see in the Old Testament, if you read deep into them, you'll see parallels. And in our first reading today, it said, but for you who fear my name, there will arise the Son of Justice with its healing rays. That's Jesus. That's the first thing that came to my mind when I read that. That's the Old Testament. Jesus had not even been born yet. As a human, he had not even been born. But he was around from the beginning of time, and immediately when I read that, I thought of the divine mercy. The healing rays that flow from Jesus' heart to keep us safe. And they're not talking about the sun that sets and rises every day. But they're talking of Jesus. God was speaking. God the Father was speaking of His Son. From the moment that earth was created, the Son and the Holy Spirit were with us. Because He said, I will breathe. And that's the Spirit. And I will send the Son to be with us always. And isn't it the hope and promise of what Jesus gives us in his divine love and mercy? Isn't that what we have to go with? Our faith and hope? Isn't it in the sacraments in which we're baptized that we hope that our child 
has been washed clean of original sin. And in reconciliation in each and every time we go in, isn't it the hope that we have that our sins truly are forgiven? And isn't it every time we walk forward and receive communion, isn't it the hope that Jesus is truly present in that piece of bread? And that's where trust comes in. We have to have trust that Jesus is with us always. In our divine, in his divine mercy. He tells us not to fear. But sometimes it's scary seeing all these things. And how do we cope with it? We have to have faith and hope and trust. And that's what Jesus gives us in this gospel. Nations will rise against nations. Wars will happen. People will see droughts and famines and hurricanes and fires and floods. But as Christians, if we look past that, we know that there is a hope of heaven for each and every one of us. If we live a good life, if we do what we're supposed to, Jesus says, I will be with you always. I am going to heaven to make many rooms for all of us. Now we don't know, truly sitting here, we don't know. But we have to have hope and faith. And we have to believe in Jesus' divine mercy to give us those. We know that Jesus died for us on the cross. We know that He loves us so much that He abolished sin once and for all by His death. And by rising again, He gave us hope of new life. That it's not the end when we see these things. So as we come forward and receive the Eucharist, let us know in our hearts that we have a promise and hope of sharing one day in eternity with, with Jesus. Fear not, for these things will happen, but He will never leave our side. He gives us the hope and promise of eternal life. And He's here with us to get us through those moments where we don't understand. But we have to trust, we have to believe, and we have to turn to His divine love and mercy. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We have listened to the words of your Son, Jesus, Lord. Help us now to put into practice what we have heard, strengthened by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Grant this, Lord, in the favors we ask in Jesus' name. For Archbishop Lucas and the priest of the Archdiocese of Omaha, who are working on a way to serve the needs of all the people in the Archdiocese with fewer priests, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout our nation during this time of turmoil and division, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who were elected to public office this past week, especially for Governor-elect Jim Pillen, for Mike Mosier, and Mike Flood, that they will be guided by the Holy Spirit when making decisions affecting the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For people throughout the world who are suffering from extreme heat, drought, flooding, fires, storms, and other natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially for Karen, Carolyn Anderson, Karen Blazer, Weston Felthouse, Mary Jarecki, Charlie Jasper, Rita Murphy, Larry Nagorski, Terry Peterson, Tammy Ritter, Mike Schramm, <coughs> Father Bob Schulman, that they may experience the healing presence of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. 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 For all who have died, especially for Mildred Preister, Mike Shalaha, Patty Jo Callahan, Bob Sliva, Tony Ramondo, Kathy Clausen, and Alan Shonifer, that they may know the joys of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. For much needed rain, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our parish families, as we look ahead to the future and make plans to build a parish center, that we may be guided by the Holy Spirit and work together to bring this project to completion, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. Let us now pray for the living and deceased of the Leo and Bertha Waste family, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For all of our unspoken needs and intentions, let us pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Right before Mass, I heard that Norma Kramers had just passed away. We pray for her and her loved ones. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, our Father in heaven, please grant us these and all our needs for which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. As the gifts in the table are being prepared, please join in singing number 590, Many and Great, number 590.
Ludzi. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good law of this holy church. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that the gifts we offer in the sight of your divine majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain for us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the gate to eternal life, and by his ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right it is your praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Gracious and make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Hmm. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, with St. Joseph, St. Isidore, St. Jehoshaphat, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, listen graciously to the prayers of this family for whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleased and to other passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. With the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As a community, we come to receive the Lord. As we come, please sing number 344, Spirit and Grace. Number 344.
Let us pray. <clears throat> we have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> We extend our deepest sympathy to the children of Tony Romando, who died last Wednesday in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Tony's funeral will be at St. Bond's on Tuesday at 10.30 a.m., visitation Monday from 4 to 7, and then the vigil at 7 at St. Bond's Church. We also extend our deepest sympathy to Susan Shanehofer and her sons, Zachary and Nicholas, whose husband and father, uh, Alan died suddenly last Tuesday. Uh, he'll be buried here on Friday at 11 a.m. Vigil on Thursday afternoon from 5 to 7 with the vigil at 7 p.m. We also extend our deepest sympathy to Cindy and Greg Contreras and Terry Jane Clausen, whose mother, Kathy Clausen, died last Tuesday. Visitation will be here in church on Thursday from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. with the funeral liturgy at 10.30 a.m. here on Thursday. And we just received word that uh, Norma Kramer's died. We pray for her and extend our sympathy to her loved ones. Eternal rest granted to them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. If you haven't already made a contribution to the Archbishop's annual campaign, I would encourage you to try to do so as soon as you can. The campaign is really misnamed. The Archbishop himself doesn't receive a penny from the campaign. He just gets to worry about all the projects that the diocese needs to do and the funding that he needs to do it. So be as generous as you can. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's go forth singing number 434, Though the Mountains May Fall, number 434. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors.